Watching a motorbike not stop, traffic policeman forces man to stop directly. The traffic police officer saw the flag on the back of the motorbike. He realized that the man was looking for his lost son, so he asked the man where he was going. The policeman took the man off the highway, then he showed him the correct route to Chuanzhou. The man thanked the policeman and continued on his way, halfway through the journey. The man opened his map to check the route, but 200 yuan fell out of it. The man then realized, this is the money that the traffic policeman had just slipped in. The man wipes the mud off the money, then he took out a small notebook. On it, he wrote 200 yuan for the highway police. This is a record of, all the kind people who helped him along the way. This is a 2015 film starring Andy Lau, a small budget film based on a true story. It brought tears to the eyes of everyone who saw it. The man's name is Lei Zai Quan. He and his wife worked outside the home in the early years, because of his grandmother's negligence. The child was abducted by traffickers. His wife was in tears every day looking for the child. As a result, she suffered from severe mental illness and committed suicide by jumping into the river. Lei Zikuan quit his job and sold his house. From then on, he set out on a journey to find his son. Many people on the road advised him to give up, but he still believed he could find his child. One day, while on his way, he was knocked down by an oncoming truck. Lao Zai woke up after being hit by a truck. He was saved by a young man, Zheng Shui who was repairing his car. Lao Zai couldn't care less about his injuries. He picked up a flag to find the child, mending the torn hole with a stitch. Then he wrote down Zing Shui's kindness. After saying goodbye to him the next day, Lao Zai set off again. Just a few days before, Lao Zai received a letter from an admirer. The other party found out that in a place in Chuanzhou, there was a young man who looked like Lao Zai's child. So Lao Zai went all the way to Chuanzhou. After a few days of travel, Lao Zai arrived in Chuanzhou. The kind man was waiting for him at the roadside. Then the kind man took Lao Zai to his destination. On the boat, Lao Zai was holding onto the rope. He was very nervous. He went to the child's adoptive father. He asked him to let him see the child. He agreed. The child came up to him. Old Zai felt as if he was seeing his own child. He took off the child's socks. There was no scar on his left foot. Lost in thought, Old Zai smiled and gave an apology. Then he turned around and left. On the way Old Zai was a bit reluctant. So he asked the fisherman to turn around and go back. He asked him to. He asked the fisherman to let him take the child for a paternity test. At this point the child's adoptive mother followed him. Lao Zai pleaded again and again. In return, he got a slap on the wrist. The child's adoptive mother even pushed him into the fish pond. He was scared too. He was afraid that the child he had raised for 15 years. He was afraid that the child he had raised for 15 years would leave his side. The child looked at the scene in front of him with a sense of loss. He, too, was afraid. He wanted to be reunited with his real parents. When Lao Zai woke up, he was left on the beach with his motorbike. The flag to find his son had also been floated away by the sea. And all this was seen by Zing Shui from afar. Lao Zai's persistence moved Zing Shui. He revealed the secret he had been hiding. It turned out that he was also a traffic child. He was only four years old at the time. The only memory he has of his home is of a rope bridge, a dense bamboo forest next to it. His mother wore long twisted braids because he was abducted. Zing Shui couldn't register for the family register or take the college entrance exam. The next day when they were parting, Zheng Shui asked Lao Zai if he could accompany her on a trip to Sichuan. It turned out that Zheng Shui had been given information by an online friend. A mother had lost her child in a village in Sichuan. A mother had lost her child. There was also a rope bridge there. The lost mother also wore a twisted braid. She was very similar to the one he remembered. Without hesitation, Lao Zai agreed to accompany him to Sichuan. On the way there, Lao Zai reprinted a chess flag to find his son. The two of them rode a motorbike from Chuanzhou to Sichuan. The journey covered over 2,000 kilometers. On the way, Lao Zai took care of Zheng Shui like a father. They ran out of money. They washed dishes on the roadside to earn money for the journey. It didn't take long for them to reach their destination. Zheng Shui looked at the scene in front of him. The memory of the scene came back over and over again. He walked on the rope bridge and looked at the bamboo forest in front of him. The familiarity of the scene made him feel very strange again. It was a woman with braided hair, recorded from in front of the two. Zheng Shui immediately ran up to her. He asked the woman if she had lost her son. The woman replied that she had not. Zheng Shui told Lao Zai, this was not the same as he remembered, but he still wanted to go to the village to see the mother. But he was strongly opposed by Lao Zai. He said that the mother had been waiting for 19 years. Just like you, you know you're not her son, and now you're going to give him a new scar. And what kind of despair would the mother face? Seeing that Zheng Shui was determined to go, Lao Zai rushed up to him. He told the story of his experiences over the past few years. There are mothers with high hopes to find their child. In the end, they found out that they were wrong. They chose to commit suicide. Perhaps it was Lao Zai's words that touched Zheng Shui. He began to understand how difficult it is to be a parent. But he didn't want to look any further. He told Lao Zai that he didn't want to look. There are so many cable-stayed bridges in China. How long would it take him? When will he find the bridge he remembers? Lao Zai took out his map, the red dots on the map, all the traces of his search. He advised Zheng Shui to persevere, finding a needle in a haystack of 1.3 billion people. There was always someone who could find it. And so the two of them tidied up. They set off on a new journey. On the way, 
They went to one rope bridge after another, but each one was not the one Zheng Shui remembered. After being disappointed over and over again, Zheng Shui chose to give up. He told Lao Zhe he wasn't going to look any further. Then he gave him a few hundred dollars. Old Zhe was so angry that he knocked the money away. At night, Zheng Shui talked in his sleep. He told him the secret he had buried in his heart. It turned out that, when he was abducted together with him, there was another person. His adoptive parents are now in a good position. He didn't want to look for his biological parents either. After hearing this important clue, Lao Zhe immediately grabbed the clothes and bags hanging on the wall, rushed out the door, turned around and went to the internet cafe, sending the information provided by Zheng Shui. All of it was posted on the internet. After the forwarding of netizens, a girl from Chongqing made a key discovery. To verify this clue he called the police station. Asked asked in 1992 whether there was a case of two children being abducted. And sure enough, in 92, two children had indeed been abducted from a village. The girl contacted Lao Zhe and his family. The three of them met up and the girl called the police station again. Zheng Shui's real father was waiting for him. After saying this, Zheng Shui turned around and slammed the door and ran out. On the other end of the phone, the father kept saying he was sorry. Then Lao Zhe found Zheng Shui. He told him that your mother had bought you bean curd for dinner, only to turn around and you disappeared, and that Socho had been transformed into a stone bridge and demolished in 2002. The bamboo forest was also cut down because of this. In the end, with Lao Zhe's enlightenment, Zheng Shui decided to be brave and face it. At night he went to dye his hair black. The next day he wore his new white clothes, together with Lao Zhe. He drove home. The entrance to the village was already full of people. They were holding banners, with the name Mao Xuesong on it. Looking at the name on the banner, Xuesong's eyes were inexplicably red. Lao Zhe opened the car door. Then he took his hand and told him it was time to go home. Cedar stepped out of the car. It was as if he was walking on the same rope bridge. Looking at himself back then, he knew that was the direction of home. The bridge had been torn down, and the bamboo forest cut down. Mother's braids have been tightened. It was time to go home. His mother embraced Cedar in a hug of excitement. Cedar has found his home. Everyone cries at this scene. Old Zay was happy because he had helped another child find a home. But as he laughed, he cried. He didn't want to be like Shue Song, to find his own child, to be reunited with his family. The next day Cedar came to take his photo and fingerprints. At that moment he smiled because he finally had an identity. Cedar gave Lao Zay his motorbike. Once again, Lao Zay set out to find his son. And that's the end of the film. The film is based on a true story. Lao Zay has been trying to find his wife for 15 years, despite the fact that he still has no clue. But he never wanted to give up for a moment. He could have forgotten who he was, forget where he came from, but he won't and doesn't dare forget. It is to continue the long and arduous journey to find his son. The play's prototype was named Gua Gang Tang. In July 2021, found his son, Guo Xinjin. I hope that all children grow up in the arms of their parents. May every family be harmonious and happy.